Alléluia. Alléluia. Mm. <clears throat> Praise God. I don't know about you, but um, doing worship and so many things run through me. There's so many places I could just take off and go and uh, praise God for his goodness and his mercy. Um, but here's one of the things that ran through me, or yeah, was stirring around inside of me. And I just thought, uh, it'd be really cool if right now people in the congregation spoke over yourself what God speaks over you. You know, who are you according to God? New creation. Amen. Forgiven. I want you to shout it out loud. We're just going to do some really fast of this right here. Righteousness of Christ. You're blessed going in. You're blessed coming out. You're blessed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Who else? Child of God. More than a conqueror. A victor. Healed. A head and not a tail. Above and not beneath. Amen. Always led into triumph through Christ Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Anybody else got any? The apple of his eye. <laughs> How about this one? Did you know he sings over you? You know there's a day coming in the future when each one's praise will come from him. Yeah. There's, there's a scripture that says each one's praise will come from him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know one person in here has never seen this movie, and that's okay. It's not that you have to see it, but it kind of surprised me when I learned it, learned it. But how many of you have seen The Wizard of Oz? Okay. No, not everybody has. There's one person who has it and has no desire to see it, and that's totally okay. But how many of you remember um, when they get to where The Wizard of Oz was? And, and they're going in, and, and the cowardly lion. Did the cowardly lion ever make it in? They were dragging him, dragging him, dragging him, and if you remember, he finally broke loose and ran out. Sometimes I think a lot of people feel that way about standing before God, afraid. Ah! What's he going to say? What's he going to do? Well, you know what? When you are a child of God, covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, you know what he sees? His child. He sees his son. He sees his daughter. Forgiven the righteousness of him in Christ Jesus. We don't have to be afraid of our Heavenly Father. Here's another picture that many of you remember. Um, John F. Kennedy at the desk. And where was his little boy at? Underneath the desk, totally at home. We ought to be totally at home in the presence of the Father. Amen. Amen. And it's good just to proclaim and declare over ourselves who he says we are. That is not arrogance. That is not pride. But what that truly is, is humility. You're saying, God, I submit to what you say. I yield myself to what you say. Amen? Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, right now, as we just keep moving forward today, I thank you for your goodness and your kindness. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. He is the teacher. I am a servant. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you'll work through me today. I thank you that truth will be deposited, truth will be received, revelation knowledge and understanding. And as a result of this time, as we've worshiped and praised you and looked into your word, our lives are changed. And we find ourselves walking more fully and completely in who we are in Christ and what you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, how many of you noticed a piece of paper, some on chairs, and then there's a piece of paper underneath chairs in front of you? I want you all to grab a piece of paper. And then we also deliberately put out extra pens today. So there's like... 
you know, behind the chairs, there's, there's pens behind the chairs. So if, if you can find a, a piece of paper, I want you to have that. And it might become a bookmarker for you. And, and I'm just going to share with you the purpose of that piece of paper. You know, next, this coming week, we're going to celebrate Thanksgiving. And I'm, I'm going to just share a little bit about Thanksgiving. I set some out for everybody. Susie, Susie, I set some out for everybody. So, <laughs> thank you. Hallelujah. Um, glory to God. Uh, okay, come back, thoughts. Um, to give thanks. And, and what I want you to do with that sheet of paper during the sermon today, you know, it can even start right now where, where you're sitting there, is write down what you're thankful for. Just different things you're thankful for. Just make a note, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to become, a, I hope, a bookmarker in your Bible. And when you go to your Bible, you'll open it up, and you'll think about these things that you're thankful for. Um, I've had the most wonderful thing happen in my life, and it, I noticed it about four years ago, and it wasn't something that I expected to have happen, but I want to talk about how I got there, where I'm at. And um, the, the title of the sermon today, the message, the thought that I'm going to share is the Thanksgiving flow, just the Thanksgiving flow. The thanksgiving flow that should just flow out of us as believers. And about four years ago, I noticed this, this thanksgiving that just, it, there's a flow. And, and it's a thanksgiving flow that I want everybody to know. Because the more we know the thanksgiving floor, flow, the more we will go and declare of his glory. The more we will go and shine the light that we should shine. The, the more thankful we are, the more it will impact people around us. And, and it's a beautiful thing to have this thanksgiving that now is just simply a flow. I, I'm, I'm so grateful for it. And I want to share with you, it wasn't always that way, and I was not always this way. Just, just in short... Um, I should have got a, a grade uh, in high school for courtroom procedure because the senior, the, the part of my senior year that I was in school and my junior year, I ended up in court once a week and I was either there for myself or for my buddies that I was hanging out with. And, and Bob Cohen was the principal back then, and he did not mind us being out of school to go to court. He'd say, you guys keep going to court, you guys keep paying those fines, and you keep my taxes down. And he was okay with that. And I got really comfortable in the courtroom. At all. But my attitude was this. Whenever I'd go to court, I would go, well, he's going to throw the book at me. I'm going to get the worst. That was my attitude. And that was kind of my attitude in life. Expecting the worst. This is my logic. Well, if I go to the courtroom expecting the worst, it can't get any worse than that. How many of you think that's a great way to go through life? <laughs> you know, just, just always expecting the worst. How many of you know there's a much better way to go through life? Can we not expect the best? Can we not expect better? And, and I want to tell you what, my attitude has changed over the years. And my wife goes, praise God. So anyway, um, you know, and Thanksgiving, it's fun to be full of Thanksgiving. So be writing down on that sheet of paper what you're thankful for. And you know what? You won't cross, you, you won't cover everything. You hang on to it and keep adding to it. And just, just giving thanks. Um, if you would, please, take and go to your Bibles to the book of uh, Habakkuk. Um, Habakkuk. And, and as we're talking about Thanksgiving, you know, I said that that Thanksgiving flow, it wasn't there naturally. 
it wasn't there automatically. Is it warm in here or is it just me? I thought I turned the air conditioner on. Someone said it's just me. Well, I could be part of it, but someone said it's warm. So, oh, that air conditioner is going to kick on in just a bit. So, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm not going to stand up here and be this warm all morning long. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm hot. Very warm. So anyway, you went to Habakkuk. We're going to look at that in, in just a little bit. But one of the things that I want to say about the Thanksgiving flow is give, and, and this is where we started because I wasn't where I am now naturally. I was on the other end of the spectrum. But one of the things that I learned was this. Give thanks by choice. Choose to give thanks. That, this is really important. Choose to give thanks. Make it a decision, I am going to give thanks. Because as believers, whether we know it or not, and I think most of us in here do, but how many of you know we don't know everything there is that we should be thankful for? There's more we're going to be learning, hopefully, that we should be thankful for. Can you imagine the times that the devil's plan was to kill you? And you went past it and didn't even notice it. Yeah, that's happened. That's happened. How many of you have had events in your life? working, driving a car, motorcycle, whatever it might be, riding in a vehicle, that, that you got, you went through that event, you got on the other side of it, and you went, wow, whoa. Just keep your hands up for a while, because I, I want people, look around. Look around in here. How many people have events like that in your life? And God just stepped in and took care of you. Supernaturally. I'm, I'm trying to think which story I might want to pick that I have. I got so many of them, so, just so many. We have so much to be thankful for. You know, th that ought to be part of your list. God, I remember I went through this, <laughs> and I just walked away. I just walked away. I saw a thing on the news. This guy, they say he was um, street racing, and uh, maybe some of you saw it, but he wrecked his Corvette. And that Corvette is in about four or five different pieces. Right? The dash is gone. The driver's seat and the passenger seat are sitting there. There is no front of the car. The guy walked away. You can see the, the motor in the transmission laying about 30 feet over here. And he walked away. I mean, there's so many times when God has taken care of us and we didn't even know it. I've had two Jeeps roll over me. Walked away unscathed both times. I mean, just the amazingness of God. So anyway, glory to God. Make giving thanks something that you do by choice. You don't, you, don't, you don't have to feel thankful in order to say thank you. Sometimes we think we have to hear something funny, uh, you know, and feel like laughing until we laugh. Last week we talked about the fact that you can just start laughing if you want to. Amen? You can just start laughing. You can just start being thankful. How many of you always feel like singing during worship time? Some say, raise their hand and go, yeah, I do. Others don't. How many of you sing anyway? Amen. Turn and look at somebody and say, sing anyway. <laughs> Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Amen. So, hallelujah. And, and, and as we go along and we choose to give thanks, it'll become a habit. It'll become a habit. And then it'll turn into this flow that comes out of us and we'll find ourselves just naturally or supernaturally giving thanks. 
Did you get open to the book of Habakkuk? Did I say chapter 3? Okay, Habakkuk chapter 3. This is some of my favorite scriptures. Hallelujah. Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3. Listen to this. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food. Pastor, this is one of your favorite scriptures? Well, we're going to attach 18 and 19 to it also. And the fields yield no food. Though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there is no herd in the stall. Can I ask a question? How's stuff going for this guy? And have you ever been there? How many of you have ever felt like this guy in what he was going through? And, and you just have a different list. Though the refrigerator won't run and the car just broke down. You know, and you got your list of things that's going on. And my boss called and laid me off. You know, there's that list, and sometimes we feel that. That's what's going on in this guy's life. And it's not going good. But verse 18, yet, everybody say yet. Yet, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. You know how he's doing that? By choice. He's making a decision to do it by choice. I will. My will is to praise the Lord. That's what I choose to do. And I'm going to praise him and I'm going to give him thanks. I'm going to give him honor and I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to thank him. Verse 18 again. And yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Man, how many of you got Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You're born again. You know it. You're born again. That was a legit question. You know you're born again. Well, guess where you get to spend eternity? Heaven. Guess what the other option is? Hell. Woohoo! <laughs> Let's just think about it for a second. I heard a lady who, who described hell one time, and it was the best description of hell I've ever heard. What, she, what God showed her was a human body, full, complete human body, and then flames consumed that body and burned it down to the bone. And then that human body was there again, and flames consumed that body and burned it down to the bone. Hell forever. Oh, did you ever burn your finger? We definitely have aloe vera plants in our home. Ain't going to be no aloe vera plants in hell. I mean, it, it, and, and, and you're going to spend eternity where? <laughs> There's reason for rejoicing right there. Hey, man, could somebody just give a hoop or a holler? Just how about a thank you, God? Thank you, God, that heaven is my home. Thank you, God, that I'm going to spend eternity with you. And heaven is so much cooler and so much better than we realize. My son Caleb, when he was younger one time, he asked me, Dad, do you think there's dinosaurs in heaven? And I said, you know what, Caleb? Here's what I think. When you get to heaven, if you still want to know if there's dinosaurs up here, walk up to God and say, hey, God, you got any dinosaurs up here? And God could go, yeah. Look right over there. And there stands a non-flesh-eating T-Rex. <laughs> you know, I just... I, go ahead, try to dream how great heaven is. The streets are made out of gold. It, it's cool. The, the, the gates, they're made out of pearls. You know, I wonder how strong that is. You think if you had gate for protection, it'd have to be a lot stronger, right? You know what? When we get to heaven, we don't need to be protected from anything. Amen? It's gonna be, we got stuff to be thankful for, don't we? Amen? Giving thanks is a great weapon. Oh, i got to keep reading here. 
Verse 18, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. He will make me walk on the high hills. Oh, do I love that. And I like to say this. If we'll do our part, he'll do his part. What's our part? Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. When everything is going great, God, when my grill is working perfectly, when my car is running to perfection, when the refrigerator is keeping everything, then I will, no, 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 no. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And what will he do for you? The Lord God is my strength. And he will make my feet like deer's feet. And he will make me walk on the high hills. How many of you are walking in better places now than you once used to walk? (laughs) Yeah, I walked in jail. I spent time in jail. Here's the beautiful thing now. I can walk in jail, minister the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and walk out of jail free. Oh man, wh- wh- the places he'll cause us to walk. The things he'll do for us. And, and how does he get a person there? Yet, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. I will joy in the God my strength. Well, how many rejoicing? You know, there ought to be a lot of rejoicing going on, amen? There ought to be a lot of giving thanks. You talk about... Um, uh, Giving thanks in where it takes us is a wonderful weapon. Can I just ask you a question? How much negative is in the world? (laughs) I mean, is there an end to the negative? There's negative. How many of you just get bombarded some days by negative? My amazing, beautiful wife, she is so sweet. She is so tender and like... What just took place with Hamas and what they did in Israel, to hear that tears her up inside. I mean, it affects her emotionally. And even though I don't like to hear stuff like that, I wish the truth would get out of what actually went on and what happens. It would be a good thing to know the truth. And in the midst of all of this stuff, do you know what we need to do as believers? Give thanks. We need to give thanks. The scripture says, in everything, give thanks. It doesn't say for everything, but in everything. Whatever situation we're in, there is a reason to give thanks. Giving thanks is a powerful weapon. Uh, Um. How many of you find that um, uh, thankful people and negative people are radically different? Uh, You ever seen, how easy does somebody flow uh, when they're a thankful person? How quickly and easily will they get into praise? You know, somebody who is thankful praises much more frequently. What does a negative person do? Complains, grumble, gripe. Who would you rather be around? And who do you spend most of your time with? In fact, who do you spend all of your time with? Man, what an incredible impact you could have on your life. (laughs) Just by being thankful. Amen? You could radically impact your life, and then you'll impact the lives of people around you. What are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? What do you want to carry around in this world? What do you want to take into this world? Praise and thanks and and good news and hope and victory? Or do you want to just repeat the negative consistently of what is out there. I don't want to do that. It's out there, and we can't stick our head in the sand and be ostriches, amen, and pretend it doesn't exist. It's there. 
And one of the ways we fight against it is by thanks and praise to God and then what he will do for us. Um, hallelujah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about triggers. That's how I just labeled. This is my second thought. Triggers for giving thanks. Little triggers that we have. Because how many of us in certain situations just find ourselves automatically giving thanks? Always? How many of us could say, sometimes I could use a little help? Sometimes I could use a little inspiration. I, I've started doing some, I don't remember how long ago, but we have a, a coffee maker at home, and there's a button that if I push it and hold it, it causes it just to run a little bit longer. It puts out a little bit more coffee in my cup. And when I would start, I would sit and go, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, you know, just kind of keep track. I change that every morning. I want you to think, what do you do every day? Think about some little things that you do every day, and we're talking about triggers. So every morning now, when I make my coffee, I stand in the kitchen, and I push that button, and I go, oh, thank you, God. You are so good. You are so worthy of praise. God, I thank you for the house I get to live in. God, I thank you for the lady that I'm married to. God, I thank you for the children that I have. God, I thank you for, and it's a trigger. Before I've had my coffee, I am caught up in giving thanks and praise to God. What are some triggers in your life? What are some things that you could put in your life to where every time you do it, you just praise the Lord? You just give Him thanks. Write some of those down. Because they're a big deal to deliberately put them in your life. Remember the first point was uh, give thanks by choice. Do things. Here, here's another thing that I've done over the years, and I learned this one years ago. Whenever I get a compliment, and yes, that does happen. I get compliments for all kinds of things, especially from my wife. You know, she's just so thrilled with me. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> but here's one of the things, one of my triggers. Whenever I get a compliment from somebody, I'll do this. I'll say thank you and, and take this from me and use it. I'll say thank you. And that's a big thing because when I get a compliment, when someone gives you a compliment, don't reject it. Because in rejecting it, you're also rejecting the giver. Don't reject the giver. Say, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I say, thank you. I receive that compliment. And I give thanks. And then I do this. Praise God. When I get a, th a, thank you, a compliment from somebody, I give a praise to God. And it's become a habit. I just do it. My brother Casimir told me one time, he said, you praise God more than anybody I know. And I went, I do? Cass didn't know many Christians at that time, so maybe that helps. Um, but uh, he said, yeah, you're always saying thanks. Praise God. See, it got inside of me. Anybody in here want to shout out some triggers that you could have in your life for praising God and saying thanks? Anybody? When the alarm clock goes off, amen. And how many are going to have to do that one by choice <laughs> and faith? Who else? What's that? At a stoplight. Wow. That will definitely take faith for me. Whoa. That one wouldn't have come through my brain. I'm usually not thanking God for stoplights. But you know, one guy, Zig Ziglar, he called them go lights. Yeah, go lights. Because if you didn't have them, traffic would be a mess. But I like that, stoplights. That's challenging. Hallelujah. What are some other ones? <laughs> Amen. Now, here's a wonderment. Has it always been open when you backed out? <laughs> Um, the garage door was shut one time when my son Caleb was learning to drive and he backed through it, but the car was already outside the garage. Oops. Um, what else? What's that? Babies. 
Amen. How about every time you get in your car and you start it in the morning? Take something you do every day. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And, and, and it gets inside of you. Hallelujah. Something that Diana and I do, and I watched a gentleman do this years ago. I don't know. I think it was 30 years ago, 40 years ago. He um, opened up the door for his wife, the car door. He, he opened it up. She sat down. He walked around and got in his side, and I thought, man, that is just class. That looks cool. So I decided to open the door for my wife all the time. And I don't just do it in public where we might be seen. I endeavor to do it at home in our driveway. You know, to get out there and open the door. Now here, flow with me on this one. How many of you think I always feel like opening her door? She, she's awesome, she's amazing, but no, I don't. There are occasions when we have little frustrations. Any other couples in here ever have those? Where you have those frustrations. You're not totally thrilled with your spouse. But here's what opening the door does for me. I'm irritated. And I don't really feel like opening her door. My, my emotions and my feelings are to entertain the thoughts that are in my head. But I've made a commitment to open the door for her. And it's amazing how quickly that act of service shuts down these thoughts. It's a big deal. And it reminds me of how thankful I am. And I, I walk around the car and my whole mindset has changed because of that little thing. It'll be amazing how much thankfulness will change us and how much it can shut down the wrong of the enemy. Just giving... Could you imagine this? The devil's trying to get you to gripe and complain. And every time something goes wrong, you just go, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You're so good to me. God, I know this happened, but you've got a way of escape for me. God, I know you caused me always to always lead me into triumph. Oh, thank you. It, it, can you imagine? How many of you would like to just frustrate the devil? Well, go ahead and give thanks and praise to God all the time. He'll get tired of it. I promise you. It... Thanks is a huge weapon. Hallelujah. So go ahead. Find some triggers. Find some triggers. Whether it's turning on the coffee pot or whatever it is. Amen. Have that list. I'm looking and I'm seeing Dave's. His is pretty full. It's full. That's why you got a backside. And there's more to go. Yeah, you might need more sheets of paper. But then, then how many of you have ever seen this in people's homes? I remember seeing it a lot with Amway and different things like that. But you go into someone's home and on their refrigerator is a picture of a boat or of a new car or something they're believing God for or just something they want. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But what happens if on your refrigerator is a list of all these things you're thankful for? See, and then what happens... As a result of choosing to give thanks, pretty soon it's just inside of us. And that's how we are. You know, how are you thankful? Um, I get people ask me, well, how are you? Uh, sometimes I say funny. I particularly like that one. How many of you answered, have answered really poorly to people's questions about questions like this? What do you know? Has anybody in here ever said nothing to that question? How many of you like telling people, I don't know nothing? <laughs> and then I think about it. I'm a minister, and I don't know nothing, but come listen to me. <laughs> it just doesn't go together. So things like that cause me to think about how I answer. How are you, funny? How are you, in love? I got all kinds of responses that I speak about how I am. Amen? Because it matters. And giving thanks for thanks just to flow out of us. What are you thankful for? Anybody want to holler out what you're thankful for? Jesus. 
Just, just go real quick. And you don't have to do the whole list, just one thing. Dave was going to do his whole list on me. <laughs> Blessed and highly favored. Who else? Louder. Amen. Who else? And it can be natural, you guys. How many of you are thankful for your car? I'm thankful for my truck. Amen. Thankful for hot water. <laughs> thankful for her husband surviving a car accident. Who else? Thankful for grandchildren. Yeah, that one got a little bit of hoop and a holler. Who else? What are you thankful for? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Who else? Thankful for your job. Uh, activities. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lori. Family and friends. Okay. Amen. Amen. Guys, we got so much to be thankful for, Heather. Health. Amen. Congregation. Amen. The people in this fellowship. Uh, electricity. Yeah. Amen. I'm thankful for running water in a bathroom that's warm inside my house. I'm glad I'm not doing, you know, the bathroom that's the end of the path. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that Terry and Teresa are here with us this morning. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and wave. They were a part of our congrega congregation for a number of years and just showed up this morning to bless us. And then Terry said they might not go back to Montana, so I'm holding him to it. So we have so much, guys. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, we're going to end service here a little bit different. One, um, I'm going to get, and then did Carol Lee leave? She's downstairs with the children. I'm going to change something that she said. The shoe boxes, what I'd like to do is just set them out here under this little covering, okay? Not that one, because we can back a car up here real easy, and it'll get less congested. So if you would, help do that. When you get a chance, just pick a shoe box up, set them outside there under the covering, lean them against the wall. And you know what I'm thankful for? There's going to be millions of these that go out into the world. And there are going to be thousands and thousands. See, this is going to happen. There are going to be thousands and thousands of children and adults who receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior as a result of these. I don't know about you, but that just stirs me inside. Because I know how much Jesus changed my life. And so thankful. So, I'm thankful for shoe boxes. I'm thankful for all of those that are going to come to know Jesus Christ as a result of us being privileged to be a part of this. Amen. Now, again, I, I don't end services on Sunday mornings without giving people a chance to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And with seriousness, you know what the most important question that you will ever be asked is who is Jesus to you who is he to you is he a historical figure somebody who was a prophet who is he to you that's the most important question you're going to get asked in your lifetime and your answer decides where you spend eternity did you know that, God's, that God so wants us into heaven that he's already written your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life? You know what will take your name and get it blotted out? Is to say no thank you to Jesus. To say no, Jesus, I don't want you. No, Jesus, I don't believe But God's plan is already for everyone to be in heaven. That's his desire. And the way we get that is by simply saying yes to Jesus.
because he did die on a cross. The sins of the world were put on his body. He died and went to hell and was raised again. Why did he do that? So we could be forgiven. If you're in this place today and you have never said, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I know I have sinned. I know I have blown it. And I'm coming to you and asking you to forgive me and to be my Lord and Savior. If you've never done that, you can. You can do that this morning. Hallelujah. Um, glory to God. Let's all go ahead and stand up. Amen. And I'm not going to ask, you know, we're not going to have a prayer line today because of the shoe boxes and different things. But I, I can't let that last prayer go. I can't let it go. If you've never said yes to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have an opportunity today. You can do that. And I'm going to have us all pray a prayer together. And as I get ready to pray this prayer, I just want to share this testimony. Um, we did it like this one time years ago back in the other church. And I just had people pray a prayer with me about receiving Christ. And then I told them, I said, when you, you know, sometime today, you tell somebody you prayed this prayer and you meant it. Well, about a year later, a couple was back. They were just visiting in the summertime. And they shared their testimony with me. When they left church, they were both teary-eyed. And they looked at each other and, you know, back and forth, who was going to go first. And finally, one of them went first as to why they were crying. And they said, because I prayed that prayer that the, the minister led us in, and I meant it. Why are you crying? And they said back to their spouse, because I prayed that prayer that the minister had us pray, and I meant it. And a year later, they were in church with us, worshiping Jesus. Did you pray this prayer with me? Just everybody pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I thank you that you love me. You gave your son Jesus so I could be forgiven. Jesus, I believe you died on a cross to take away my sin. You went to hell and you were raised again. I believe that in my heart. And Jesus, right now, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you, Jesus, that the Bible tells me that you are rich to all who call upon your name. I call upon your name. And I thank you that I'm forgiven. I'm born again. I'm in your family, God. I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today for the first time in your life and you meant it, you make sure you let somebody know you prayed that prayer. Amen. Just tell them wherever it is, whoever it is, just let them know. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, um, turn, give somebody a hug or a high five. And those of you that want to help share, carry shoe boxes out of here, you can just do that as you're ready. It doesn't have to be a great big rush. Amen. Let somebody know they're wonderful.